Hello everyone, my name is Paul. Welcome to Common Touch of Fantasy. This is my September releases video. Uh, these are the books in September that I think look the best. I went through most of the new releases that are coming out in September. And these are the books I think are pretty cool and things that I would like to read. Uh, if you would like to see comprehensive lists of things that come out this month, I'll put some links in the description box below. Uh, a couple to Tor, one from IO9 and one from Locust Mag. They're pretty comprehensive about what comes out uh, during the months. And here we go. Uh, first off, we're going to go with September 6th and Bradley Bullio. It has a new, I think it's a new uh, novella. It's not a sequel to 12 Kings of Shurikai, but it's a novella in that world. Uh, I really like the cover art. I think it's really cool. But it's like connected to the world, and I think it looks pretty cool. I know that Caitlin's reading it right now. Uh, Sita, the heroine of the widely anticipated just-released novel Twelve Kings and Shurikai, is the youngest pit fighter in the history of the great desert city of Shurikai. In this prequel, she has already made her name in the arena as the fearsome, undefeated White Wolf. None but her closest friends and allies know her true identity. But this all changes when she crosses the path of Rumiesh on... A Rook, a sadistic creature forged long ago by the god of chaos. The Iriac are usually desert dwellers, but this one lurks in the dark corners of Shurikai, toying with and preying on humans. As Rumiesh works to unmask the white wolf and claim Seda for her own, Seda's struggle becomes a battle for her very soul. I think this sounds amazing. I have yet to read Twelve Kings of Shurikai, even though I do own the book. But I think this sounds like a great prequel, kind of flesh out the world a little bit more. But it's not necessarily required reading for the uh, series. Okay, that comes out uh, June. Sorry, September sixth from Da. Uh, One hundred and seventy-five pages. Kindle edition. Moving on, uh, September 6th from Tor Books. I usually don't read a whole lot about like books late in series, but the synopsis of this sounded so cool, and I want to read this series now, and I just wanted to share this fourth book and what it's about with you guys as well. So this is from Alex Bledsoe. It's called Chapel of Ease. It's uh, the Tufa series. The latest installment in Alex Bledsoe's critical acclaimed Tufa series that Kirkus Reviews calls powerful, character-driven drama a sheer delight. When Matt Johansson, a young New York actor, additions for Chapel of Ease, an off-Broadway musical, he is instantly charmed by Ray Parrish, the show's writer and composer. They soon become friends. Matt learns that Ray's people call themselves the Tufa and that the musical is based on the history of his isolated hometown. But there is one question in the show script that Ray refuses to answer. What is buried in the ruins of the Chapel of Ease? <clears throat> As opening night approaches, strange things happen. A dreadlocked girl follows Ray and spies on him. At the press preview, a strange Tufa woman warns him to stop the show. Then, as the rave reviews arrive... Ray dies in his sleep. Matt and the cast are distraught, but there's no question of shutting down. The run quickly sells out. They postpone opening night <clears throat> for a week, and Matt volunteers to take Ray's ashes back to Needsville. He also hopes, while he's there, to find out more of the real story behind the play and discover the secret that Ray took to his grave. Matt's journey into the haunting Appalachian Mountains of Cloud Country sets him on a dangerous path where some secrets deserve to stay buried. I think the synopsis for this sounds amazing. Uh, Off-Broadway musical. Uh, all these books has something to do with like the magic of music. 
and I just think it sounds cool and I just wanted to talk about it some to maybe bring a little bit more attention to Alex Bledsoe's series here uh, this is the fourth Tufa book and uh, they're relatively popular for people that like them quite a bit uh, moving on we have a book by KV Johansson this is from Pyre September 6th uh, this is the third book in the Marakon uh, series the fugitive slave Gu has ended the assassin Arjev's century-long possession by a murderous and hungry ghost but at great cost heir to the dying gods of Naven he is drawn back to the empire he fled as a boy journeying east on the caravan road with Ajar at his side haunted by memory of those he has slain Ajar is ill in mind and body and danger to those about him and to the men who loves him most of all tortured by violent nightmares he believes himself mad only his determination not to leave Gao to face his fate alone keeps Ajar from asking to be freed at last from his unnatural life innocent and madman god and assassin two men to seize an empire from the tyrannical descendants of the devil Yilin, but in war-torn Naven, enemies of gods and humans stir in the shadows. Yilin herself meddles with the air of her enemies and his soul-shattered sh companion as the fate of the empire rests on their shoulders. Uh, this is from Pyre. I think this is really cool. I really want to read this series. Uh, the first book is, let's check it out real quick, The Leopard. Uh, Mercari number one. The second one is The Lady. And then this third one is Gods of Naban. Uh, each book has gotten better and they seem like the type of books that I would enjoy. Uh, a couple people really enjoyed it. Uh, that is from Pyre, Gods of Naban. Uh, next one in fantasy is Summer Long by Peter S. Beagle. Uh, Peter S. Spiegel is the guy that wrote The Last Unicorn, and I think this sounds fun. Uh, one rainy February night, while dining in a favorite local haunt, Abe and his girlfriend Joanna meet waitress Lioness Lazas, new in town without a place of her own. Fascinated and moved by the girl's plight, Joanna invites Lioness to stay in Abe's garage. Lioness is about to alter the lives of Abe, Joanna, and those around them forever awesome uh check out the cover i saw this cover a few days ago actually at the bookstore uh, they put it out early and i love the cover i think the cover is beautiful i hope this does well because peter s beagle needs to do uh something successful because he's been having a lot of uh horrible legal battles the last few years so i hope it does well uh, next on Fantasy, we have at September 13th by Tor.com, a new series starts by, by, excuse me, by Marie Brennan, Cold Forged Flame. Sounds amazing. Uh, the sound of a horn pierces the apron, shattering the stillness of the realm. Its clarion call creates ripples, substance, something more. It is a summons, a command. There is will, there is need, and so in reply there is a woman. At the beginning, no, at the end, she appears full of fury and bound by chains of prophecy, setting off an unexplained quest from which she is compelled to complete and facing unnatural challenges in a land that doesn't seem to exist, she will discover the secrets of herself or die trying. But along the way, the obstacles will grow to a seemingly insurmountable point, and the final choice will be the biggest sacrifice yet. This is the story of a woman's struggle against her very existence, an epic tale of the adventure, an emotional upheaval on the way to face an ancient, enigmatic foe. This could only spawn from the imagination of Marie Brennan, award-winning author and beloved fan fantasist, beginning a new series about the consequences of war and of uh, fate. Very cool. September 13th from Tor.com um, Yep. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, the next in fantasy we have The Family Plot. This comes out September 20th by Sherry Priest. 
I think this just sounds like a very interesting take on a kind of like a literary fantasy uh, with a little bit of horror aspects. Uh, Chuck Dalton built Music City Salvage with patience and expertise, stripping historic properties and reselling their bones. Inventory is running low, so he's thrilled when Augusta Withrow appears in his office, offering salvage rights to her entire property. This could be a gold mine, so he assigns his daughter Delilah to personally oversee the project. The crew finds a handful of surprises right away. Firstly, the place is in unexpectedly good shape. And then there's the cemetery, about 30 fallen and overgrown graves dating to the early 1900s. Augusta insists that the cemetery is just a fake, a Halloween prank, so the city gives the go-ahead, the bulldozer revs up, and it turns up human remains. Augusta says she doesn't know whose body it is or how many others might be present and refuses to answer any more questions. Then she stops answering the phone. But Delilah's concerns about the corpse and Augusta's disappearance are overshadowed when she begins to realize that she and her crew are not alone and they're not welcomed at the Withrow estate. They have no idea how much danger they're in, but they're starting to get the idea. On the crew's third night in the house, a storm shuts down the only road to the property. Dun dun dun. The power goes out. Cell signals are iffy. There's nowhere to go and no one Delilah can call for help. Even if anyone would believe that she and her crew are being stalked by a murderous phantom. Something at the Withrow Mansion is angry and lost, and this is its last chance to raise hell before the house is gone forever, and it seems to be seeking permanent company. The family plot is a haunted house story for the ages, atmospheric, scary, and strange, with a modern, gothic sensibility to keep it fresh and interesting. From Cherry Priest, a modern master of supernatural fiction. Sounds a lot of fun. That is uh, September 20th. Next, we have uh, September 27th, The Ferryman Institute by Colin, uh, I'm going to say Giggle? <laughs> Giggle? Gilg. I don't know. In this stunning, fantastical debut novel from a bold new voice in the best selling traditions of Christopher Moore and Jasper Ford, a ferryman for the dead finds his existence unraveling after making either the best decision or the biggest mistake of his immortal life. Ferryman Charlie Dawson saves pe dead people. Somebody has to convince him to move on to the afterlife after all. Having never failed a single assignment, he's acquired a reputation for success that's as legendary as it, unwanted, as it is unwanted. It turns out that serving as a ferryman is causing Charlie to slowly lose his mind. Deemed too valuable by the Ferryman Institute to be let go and too stubborn to just give up in his own right, Charlie's pretty much abandoned all hope of escaping his grim ex existence, or he had anyway until he saved Alice Spiegel. To be fair, Charlie never planned on stopping Alice from taking her own life. That sort of thing is strictly forbidden by the Institute but he never planned on the president secretly giving him a choice to either. Charlie's not quite sure what to make of it, but Alice is alive, and it's the first time he's felt right in more than 200 years. When word of an incident reaches Inspector Javrouche, the Ferryman Institute's resident internal affairs liaison, Charlie finds he's in more world he's in a world of trouble but charlie's not about to lose the only thing living breathing person he's ever saved without a fight he's ready to protect her from javarosh and save alice from herself and he's willing to put the entire continued existence of mankind at risk to do it it just sounds so fun written in the same vein as best-selling modern classics such as the air affair by jasper ford and a dirty job by christopher moore the ferryman institute is a thrilling supernatural adventure packed with wit and humor. I think this sounds amazing. Just the whole idea of like the, the ferryman that takes people to the afterlife and he ends up saving somebody. I, I just think that's cool. And there's a whole institute. It sounds neat. Okay, moving on to science fiction. Uh, September 6th from Titan Books, we have Invasion by Luke Reinhardt. Uh, super intelligent furry animals I'm sorry super intelligent furry aliens suddenly appear from another universe and they've come to earth to have fun 
Louis follows fisherman Billy Morton home one day, and he and his family come quickly to love the playful alien. But when Louis starts using his their computer to hack into government and corporate networks and steal millions from banks to give to others, they realize that Louis and his friends mean trouble. Billy, his wife, and two sons begin a roller coaster ride of fame, fortune, jail, death, resurrection, and a distinguished ranking high on the FBI's most wanted list. The government soon decides that all these aliens are terrorists. They must be eliminated. The aliens are playing games that help will help humans to see the insanity of the American political, economic, and military systems. But the powers that be don't play games. They make war. This just sounds like a modern day E.T. It just sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, moving on in sci-fi, uh, September 6th, Women, Women of Futures Past, Classic Stories. This is uh, an anthology of older science fiction female authors uh, with a couple newer ones as well. And I just think it sounds cool. Uh, a lot of these voices aren't being heard or have been forgotten. Anthology of Great SF Stories by Renowned women sf authors a collection of a wonderful sf carefully selected by groundbreaking editor and author christine catherine roosh stories by andre norton and mccaffrey lewis mcmaster bilgeld cj cherry and more uh, includes stories by Leia brackett Louise McMaster Bujold, Pat Cadigan, CJ Cherry, Senna Henderson, Nancy Kress, Ursula K. Le Guin, and McCraffrey, C.L. Moore, Andre Norton, James Tiptree Jr., and Connie Willis. Um, the Leah Brackett fiction is the person that wrote The Empire Strikes Back. Uh, so, yeah, it's awesome. And the C.L. Moore story is a like space smuggler that uh, predates Han Solo by like four decades. So looking forward to this. This seems pretty cool. Great anthology of amazing authors. Okay, next is a kind of like a thriller sci-fi, MJ-12 Inception by Michael J. Martinez. Uh, it is a new world stunned by the horrors that linger in the aftermath of total war. The United States and Soviet Union are squaring off in a different kind of conflict, one that's fought in the shadows where there are whispers of strange and mysterious developments. Normal people across the United States have inexplicably gained paranormal abilities. A factory worker can heal the sick and injured. A school teacher bends emotions to her will. A car salesman alters matter with a simple touch. A formal soldier speaks to the dying and gains their memories as they pass on. They are variants controlled by a secret government program called Majestic 12 to open a new front in the Cold War. From the deserts of Nevada to the palaces of Istanbul, the halls of power in Washington to the dark, oppressive streets of Prague, the variants are thrown into a deadly game of shifting alliances. Amidst the seedy underbelly of nations, these once ordinary Americans dropped in extraordinary circumstances will struggle to come to terms with their abilities as they fight to carve out a place for themselves in a world that may ultimately turn against them. Cool. It's like an X-Men uh, spy thriller sci-fi. <laughs> Basically. Uh, next one we have is Ninth City Burning. This is September 6th by J. Patrick Black. Um, we never saw them coming. Entire series disappeared in the blink of an eye, leaving nothing but rubble and dust. When an alien race came to make Earth theirs, they brought with them a weapon we had no way to fight. A universe-altering force known as Thelamity. <laughs> Thelamity. It seemed nothing could stop it, until we discovered we could wield the power to. 500 years later, the Earth is locked in a grinding war of attrition. The talented few capable of bending Thelamy the Lumiti to their will are trained in elite military academies, destined for the front lines. Those who refuse to support the war have been exiled to the wilds of a ruined Earth. But the enemy's tactics are changing and Earth's defenders are about to discover this century's old war has only just begun 
As a terrible new onslaught looms, heroes will rise from unlucky quarters and fight back. Sounds pretty cool. Even though I can't say that word. Fell and mighty. Fell mighty. Fell mighty. Whatever. Uh, of course, Everfair by Nisi Shaw. This would probably be the more popular book of September. An alternate history, historical fantasy, steampunk novel set in the Belgian Congo. From noted short story writer Nisi Shaw. Everfair is a wonderful neo-Victorian alternate history novel that explores the question of what might have come of Belgium's disastrous colonization of the Congo if the native populations had learned about steam technology a bit earlier. Fabian socialists from Great Britain joined forces with African-American missionaries to purchase land from the Belgian Congo's owner, King Leopold II. This land, named Everfair, is set aside as a safe haven an imaginary utopia for native populations of the Congo as well as escaped slaves returning from America and other places where African natives were being mistreated. Shaw's speculative masterpiece manages to turn one of the worst human rights disasters on record into a marvelous and exciting exploration of the possibilities inherent in a turn of history. Everfair is told from a multiplicity of voices, Africans, Europeans, East Asians, and, and African Americans in a complex relationship with one another, and a compelling range of voices that have historically been silenced. Everfair is not only a beautiful book, but an educational and inspiring one that will give the reader new insight into an often ignored period of history. Very cool. September 6th from Tor Books. Uh, here's one that I, I think, kind of overlooked, but I think sounds cool. Black Wave by Michelle T. It's 1999 in San Francisco, and as shockwaves of gentrification sweep through Michelle's formerly scruffy neighborhood, money troubles, drug-fueled mishaps, and a string of disastrous affairs send her into a tailspin. Desperate to save herself, Michelle sets out to seek a fresh start in Los Angeles. Meanwhile, climate-related disruptions and a string of extinctions are the background noise of impending doom. One day, Michelle wakes up to an official announcement the world will be ending in exactly one year. Daily life in Los Angeles quickly becomes intensely surreal. Humans begin to collectively dream of the lives and the loves they would have had if not for the end of the world, and the lines between fantasy and reality become increasingly blurred. As the planet nears its expiration date, Michelle holds up in an abandoned bookstore and calmly begins to write. Convinced, she's finally stumbled upon the elusive Universal Story, a novel about a struggling writer facing the end of the world. Funny, gritty, improbable, and endearing, Black Wave muses on the hallucinatory confusions of addiction, the hope and despair of a barely published writer, notions of destiny, and the porous boundaries between memoir and fiction. This sounds amazing. So yeah, the, the new uh, edition comes out uh, February 13th, Black Wave by Michelle T. Of course, Jerusalem by Alan Moore is coming out. Uh, this is one of those, like, huge books in the half in the half a square mile of decay and demolition that was England's Saxon capital eternity is littering between the fire trap tower blocks embedded in the grubby amber of the district's narrative among its saints kings prostitutes and derelicts a different kind of human time is happening a soiled Simultaneity <laughs> does not differentiate between the petrol colored puddles and the fractured dreams of those who navigate them. Fiends last mentioned in the Book of Tobit wait in urine scented stairwells and delinquent specters of unlucky children undermine a century with tunnels and in upstores parlor, parlors laborers with a golden blood reduced fate to a snicker tournament. Okay, let's go down to the bottom. Yeah, I'm probably not going to read this, but, okay. 
just make sure you guys know that Jerusalem is coming out by Alan Moore. Uh, I think Alan Moore has kind of gone off the deep end, so I don't know if I'll, I'm going to read that. Moving on. Uh, the Gradual by Christopher Priest. This is September 20th. A new literary novel by the critical acclaimed author of The Prestige, Christopher Priest. A rich and evolving tale of the creative mind, the rigors of living under war, and the nature of time itself. Alessandro grows up in Glaude, a fascist state constantly at war with a faceless opponent. His brother is sent off to war. His family is destroyed by grief. Occasionally, he catches glimpses of islands in the far distance from the shore, and they feed into the music he composes, music for which he is fetid. His search for, from his brother's his search from his brother brings him into contact with the military leadership, and suddenly he is a fugitive on the run. He seeks refuge on the islands, and his endless travels take him through places in time, bringing him answers where he could not have foreseen them. All right. From the guy that wrote The Prestige comes The Gradual. Two more. The Warren by Brian Evanson. This is September 20th by Tor.com. X doesn't have a name. He thought he had one or many, but that might be the result of the failing memories of the personalities imprinted within him. Or maybe he really is called X. He's also not as human as he believes himself to be. But when he discovers the existence of another above ground outside the protection of the Warren, X must learn what it means to be human or face the destruction of their two species. Very cool. I've heard someone call this call this book like extremely frustrating but awarding. So, The Warren by Brian Evanson. And lastly, we have a sci-fi space opera type thing, The Corporation Wars Dissidents by um, Ken McLeod. They've died for the companies more times than they can remember. Now they must fight to live for themselves. Sentient machines work, fight, and die in interstellar exploration and conflict for the benefits of their owners, the competing mining corporations of Earth. But sent over hundreds of light years, commands are late to arrive and often hard to enforce. The machines must make their own decisions and make them stick. With this newfound autonomy come new questions about their masters. The robots want answers. The companies would rather see them dead. The Corporation Wars Dissidents is an all-action, colorful space opera giving a robot's eye view of a robot revolt. Very cool. That is, uh, well, it looks like it's already been out in uh, probably England, probably. But I think the next one comes out. I don't know. The thing I looked at said that this was coming out. So, yeah. Sounds cool. So those are the books that I think sound the most interesting uh, for September. Let me know what you are looking forward to reading in September. Um, once again, I have links in the description box of all the books basically that are coming out that people are talking about. And uh, so yeah, check those out if you want to. Uh, thanks for watching. Of all of these, I I have a I have a thing for the uh, the Ferryman Institute. This whole idea of a ferryman that uh, is a part of an institute of ferrymen that take people to the afterlife and he ends up saving somebody. I don't know. I think this might be good and something that I might like. Also, I think the uh, the book by Michelle T. The Black Wave is like a literary sci-fi type book that I think that I would like. I think it sounds cool. Other than that, uh, Everfair, of course, sounds amazing. And uh, I hope that Peter S. Spiegel book does well, too. Alright, thanks for watching. If you did, um, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching.